All right, AP Environmental. Uh, this is a quick topic today uh, that I want to just quickly go through with you uh, on acid rain. This is topic 7.7. .7. Yeah, I've been talking a little bit about acid rain last couple of days in my lectures um, as far as you know what particular uh, pollutants uh, can cause acid rain. I'll get back into that today a little bit. Uh, but today, basically, I want to just kind of go through just some of the issues uh, with acid rain. We call it acid deposition. It's the same thing. Um, but a few things to kind of understand before uh, we kind of get into to how acid rain forms. Um, first of all, the pH scale. All right, you do need to be familiar with the pH scale. Number seven is neutral, less than seven is acidic, and greater than seven is alkaline. But each number that you go down or go up, remember since this is logarithmic, it's a, it's a power of 10. So I mean, this is kind of like the Richter scale a little bit, right? Um, a pH of six is 10 times more acidic than a pH of seven. So if we're going to the left, say we're starting at seven, we're going to the left, you know, we get 10 times more acidic, 100 times more acidic, a uh, thousand times more acidic with a pH of four. We're just increasing that acidity by a power of 10, okay? Now, normal rainwater, you know, normal rain does have a, a slightly acidic pH. It's, it's natural. You know, it's, it's about right here on our pH scale, about 5.6. All right, but again, that's kind of normal for rain to have that slightly acidic pH. Acid rain can get down into the fours and even lower. Now we get into that four range and below that, now we're talking about rain that is that is quite acidic. You know, 4.3 is is greater than one, a one point difference on our scale. So we can we can make the assumption that acid rain is at least 10 times more acidic or more uh, than, than normal rainwater is. And that's kind of an issue. Now, a couple things also to remember, you know, um, coal burning power plants, they release NOx and they release SO2. Those are two major contributors to acid deposition. Um, motor vehicles, you know, uh, burn fossil fuels. And they also produce NOx, which is, again, the same thing as the NOx up here. It does contribute uh, to acid rain. There are some natural sources. One of them that comes to mind is volcanoes. The volcanoes naturally erupt. They pr do produce tremendous amounts of SO2, which, again, can turn into acid rain. So let's talk about how this actually happens. So you know, this, this diagram is kind of showing you exactly how acid rain forms. So we'll start over here on the left with the sources. So again, factory emissions, coal burning power plants, car emissions, volcanoes, which would be a natural source. Those things emit SO2 and NOx. All right, I, I'm more concerned that you understand the, the anthropogenic sources more so than the natural ones, but again, all of these things do produce SO2 and NOx. Now, once those things go into the air, they oxidize. Basically what happens is that they react with water that's in the atmosphere, and they produce these two things. Now, I need you to know these formulas and their names, H2SO4, that's called sulfuric acid. You need to know that. HNO3, that is called nitric acid. You need to know that. So again, when SO2 and NOx go into the air, they will turn into sulfuric and nitric acid. Now, here's where a couple of the different things can happen. Okay, one of the things, you'll notice, you see these two arrows right down here, or where, my, where my cursor is pointing to. One of the things that can happen is that these acids can just fall right back down to the earth in the form of, of rain or snow. Right? We call that wet deposition. There is such a thing as acid snow. It sounds kind of cool, but there is acid snow. There's also acid rain. So wet deposition is just rain that has these acids in them. 
Uh, that's acid rain or, or, or wet deposition. Now, another thing that can happen to these acids while they're in the air is they can dissociate from each other. They can actually break apart and they can form these ions, hydrogen ions, sulfate ions, or nitrate ions. Those ions can be carried by the wind. So even though, let's say, for example, this, you know, this, let's say there's a factory that's producing SO2 and NOx and all this acid builds up in the air. Yeah, the area near that factory is probably susceptible to acid rain, but you, you might get these ions that blow 100 miles away. And when, when they do that, they actually can come back down to the earth uh, in the form of what we call dry deposition. That means they, they can actually move through the air and then they can form wet deposition that can fall as acid rain in a different location. So I want us to know that these acids, a couple different things could happen to them, but the bottom line is they can come back down to the earth and they can impact people either very close to the, to the original source or they can affect people that live miles and miles away from that original source. All right, so the effects of acid rain, like what can happen? Again, if you live downwind from, let's say, a coal power plant, your life can be greatly affected by acid rain. Generally, these people that live downwind from the power plant, those people get the most direct effects of that acid deposition. Acid rain can lower the pH of soil, which makes it much more difficult to grow crops. You know, that's not a good thing. That could ruin our soil. Uh, it can lower the pH of surface waters. You know, that can affect any living things in those waters, whether they're lakes or ponds or rivers or whatever. You know, different fish, different living things have different tolerances to acid. Um, so you know, whereas maybe some fish can tolerate, uh, you know, a slight change in acidity, other fish may not be able to tolerate that. So this has a big impact on biodiversity. You know, if you get below a, a pH of five, most fish and most amphibians um, can't tolerate that. So that's probably not a good thing. Um, another thing that, that pH can do or, or acids can do is they allow metals, like metal ions in the soil, uh, to actually move, to migrate. Uh, they can move to the surface. They can move into local waterways. They can move into uh, groundwater supplies. You know, some of these metals include things like mercury, lead, aluminum. And when you get acid in the soil, it makes these metals more mobile. Now, one big, one big problem is aluminum ions. You know, aluminum, you know, once there's acid in the soil, these aluminum ions can, can, can get absorbed by plants. And when they get absorbed by plants, then that affects their ability to absorb other nutrients, things like calcium, for example, which is a limiting factor for plants. So if they can't, you know, uh, absorb calcium, then the plants can't grow, the plants are going to die, and that's not a good thing. But that's all because those, plant, those plants absorbed aluminum ions that became mobile uh, when the soil became too acidic. So, I mean, that, that pH of soils, that, that does impact uh, a lot of the other materials that are in the soil. Uh, another thing that, that acid rain can do is it can affect our infrastructure. You know, things like buildings and bridges and statues, you know, that have been erected and, and, and been um, you know, visible for, for hundreds of years. Now, all of a sudden, when acid rain comes down, it erodes those things. It can even erode the paint off of automobiles. I mean, that's how bad it can get. Uh, one more thing just quickly I want to I wanna mention today. Um, soil. You know, there are different types of soils, right? We learned this back in, uh, what, unit four or five, I believe. Um, you know, some soils have different parent material, you know, the rock from which they were formed. Some soils um, are very rich in limestone. 
calcium carbonate. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, limestone uh, is a parent material that will naturally neutralize or buffer the pH of acid rain. So if you live in an area where um, you, know, you, you, you get some acid rain, if your soils are rich in limestone, take a look at this reaction here. Okay, we've got calcium carbonate. This is limestone, which is, is found in some soils. This is sulfuric acid. This is in acid rain, right? So if those two things react together, look at what we get as our results. We get calcium sulfate, which is gypsum. We talked about that yesterday. This is, this is an environmentally safe compound. We get water and we get CO2, okay? Which, I mean, CO2 is not a good thing, but, you know, when it comes to acid rain getting in our soils, I guess, you know, this probably isn't so bad. Um, but again, you know, th that, that calcium carbonate can help neutralize the effects of sulfuric acid. The problem is there's not a lot of soils around our country that are really rich in limestone. Some are, some aren't, depends on where you live. So most of the soils in our country don't have a lot of calcium carbonate in them. So that means our soil is much more susceptible uh, to some of these problems associated with acid rain. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, again, hopefully you've learned something from this uh, video. Uh, I will see you soon. Take care.